I have a piece of shikishi board. It is used for calligraphy and sumi-e ink drawings and things. And it is a rice paper mounted to a board with sort of this gold foil along the edges and backing as well. And it's just kind of fun to do ink drawings on these. So I just got this little tiny piece. It's an ACEO size. And I'm going to do a little bit of drawing with this Kuratake pen and this blue Airbnb ink. Wetting the surface. Not super wet. Just, you see, like right now, it's absorbed the water, so it's moistened, but it's not pooling anywhere. Can you tell what this is from this blobby shape? <laughs> the tail makes it a little bit more obvious. So right now I'm just letting things really bleed and move around everywhere. upper portion and then I'm going to take my brown this brown kind of separates out into the brown that you see in this pale reddish color as well as it spreads out in the water and all the liquid that I've added here. And it also has these little gold sparkles, <laughs> which makes it especially fun with the edges of this board melding into that. Yeah, this is the green nuage. So it's a light gray. It's also great for blending out other colors. I like having this pale gray in my arsenal of colors that I can pull out for these brush pens. It's a great blender. All right, again, going to let this dry and see what happens. Here is a cat silhouette. I am taking now a black gel pen. This is High Tech C, Pilot High Tech C. Let's see if this has any less bleeding than the brush pens go. I'm, I'm guessing since it's less amount of liquid that it won't spread out as much. And that does seem to be the case. And 
this is just a regular white gel pen. Uniball Signo. Super opaque. <laughs> it's very subtle because my blues were already pretty dark to start with, but I've just made just his head and chest a little bit darker than the rest. And then I'm going to take my Gris Nuage color and blend things out a little bit more so that it really integrates into the blue. I don't want to shape my outer edge too much because I really love this halo effect that the wet on wet blue pen had on this rice paper. I love that shimmering edge of pale blue that it resulted in. So I, I want to shape this a little bit more because some of the bleeding went a little bit nuts and I lost the form of the cat, especially in this part right here. But I want to maintain the rest of it all along the back and the tail as much as possible because that's, that's just cool stuff. And you know, why mess with things when they turn out great accidentally. All right, but the shape of his body here. I do want to kind of get his form a little bit better and figure out exactly how his paws are situated. And I think I've got one there and I probably got one there. Oh yeah, that's how he looks. And his bunched up haunches and his last, well, his last visible paw would be right about there. And then all this grass here, this tufted grass would obscure part of his tail. But I think I need some more blues, or maybe even blacks, without giving him little black paws. blending upwards. Little bits of highlights on those paws, on his toes. Shifting over to the blue 
just to better blend this stuff upwards. giving his tail a little bit more shape as well, a little more form. Again, I love that little rim of brighter, almost red-orange that resulted from just the bleeding of the colors. And so I want to maintain that. I don't want to paint and overwork that stuff. You want to find the surprises that your materials provide for you, those opportunities, and utilize them when they happen. So the things that are out of your control sometimes can create some really beautiful effects. And you have to keep your eye open to those and your mind open to them as well so that you don't overlook that chance. Now, I need more tufts of grass. Oh, hey, I'm actually getting some really fine lines over here. Oh, that's right, because <laughs> I forgot I painted the um, the white in that area. So it's actually giving a slightly less absorbent surface. seed heads on my grasses. Same with the stuff on this side. Some taller bits of grass, just a few of them. And over here. Now I'm going to take my gray and blend stuff again. Especially right over here right under him. It's tricky getting that shadow in but also maintaining that little glow of orange that I told you I liked. I'm going back in with the white just to add a little bit of, you know, gotta get, sometimes you get the squeeze to get the ink down into the tip when it starts to get a little bit dry. But you don't want to squeeze too hard because then you might push too much into there. Just a little bit of fur texture along his back. A little bit of highlight. Make sure to let your brush stroke go along with the direction of the fur. Now I think what I would like to do, I think I would like to darken this upper area a little bit more. I think it's too light. And I don't currently have a brush pen 
loaded up with this golden brown color. So instead, I'm just going to dip into there with a regular brush. A number probably a number one brush tip point shaking up the ink and I'm going to get this upper area wet with water so that I can get some nice bleeding happening and separation of the ink tones because I really like what's happening with that so far so let's just keep going with that and dip my brush in. Spreading stuff out a little bit more. I don't want to get too close to my cap because I've seen how much this paper will just soak up the water and spread things much further than I anticipate if I'm not careful. I'm going to add a little bit of that color actually even to these lower areas just to tie in my colors. Just a little bit over here and a little bit down here and over here as well into the corners. Closing that bottle up because that's all I need of it, I think. And then Taking my gray and further pulling the stuff down and blending. And then to top it off, I'm going back in with the brown again. and doing another layer of branches because a lot of my earlier branches seem to have gotten obscured now or bleed, bleed, bled out. And so this, but you could still see hints of it, which I like. So it's, it's sort of this more distant layer of branches. And so this gets layered on top of that, which creates a very dimensional effect then. And I'll probably wait until this dries and then further darken these lines and, and define them. fun just watching this change even as I'm doing this as it sort of blends out. Time for this piece to take another pause while it dries. I'm just going to finish this one off with a little bit of negative space whitening in these upper branches to shape them a bit more. I don't want to obliterate the gorgeous bleed that has happened from um, the brown to this orangey red 
to a lighter yellowish brown going on. I want to preserve that as much as possible. So I'm only touching these in a few little places. So it's not to obliterate the beauty of what is already happening without me having to take an active hand. <laughs> 